Hi, my name is Sai, and I've tested a lot of keyboards. I found that for actually playing games, they're all about the same, sort of confirmed by this footage here. Unless you're playing a game that specifically needs macros and extra keys, it's actually better to choose keyboards based on the size, extra features, software, and of course the typing experience. This is the Epic Gear Defiant. It comes in this carry case, and it's being advertised as a modular metric structure mechanical keyboard meaning that you can easily change the switches on the board. Also in the case are the light bars. The LEDs are white, so you can use these to add color. Then there's a full rubber wrist thrust, which has such a strong smell that I'm leaving it in the case. Not sure if that will get better over time. Then there are the side mounts and the switches pack. As for the board, it's making use of the popular plain rectangle open board design with dimensions of 45.5 centimeters by 16 centimeters. And the key height is about four centimeters. Board height is about 2cm, and if you use the side mounts, you can raise or lower it. The key height can go up to about 5.5 or 6cm. There are stands on the base, which only have the rubber feet when extended. And there are rubber feet on the front too. With the stands down, it adds about a centimeter of height. There's an aluminum plate on top, which doesn't pick up fingerprints. Function key to use with the media keys as well as a windows lock key and then a brightness control which has four modes then you have the n key rollover option put it in six key mode that's usually for bios issues so you can only hold down six at once then in the n key rollover mode you can press down as many as you like there is a volume control wheel on the right and if you press that in it mutes audio only one page in the manual which tells you the lighting modes function with number pad one is full lit two is off three is this ripple mode they call breathing 4 is full lit, but if you press the keys, they switch off. 5 is the opposite, so the keys are off to start. And then 6 through to 9 are programmable, but I haven't found out how to do that. Also, if you press function with 1 through to 4, you can switch between the profiles. Then we have the instructions on how to remove the keycaps and switches, with the 2-in-1 puller at the back. First, we remove the keycap. Just the standard cap, except I've noticed that they all have these little scratch marks. It's hard to detect on camera, but you can see them because they're letting a bit of light through. No idea where that's from, but they're on every key and straight lines. It actually looks like a feature of the cap. Maybe anyway. Then remove the switch, and they have a clear light bar in them. You can then put your own in. They're easy enough, put the flat end in first. And here's what they look like. Pink, yellow, blue, green, and a different pink. And I guess this is a cheap alternative to actually having RGB LEDs. For the key switches, basically the Epic Gear Purples are like Cherry MX Blues. They have the click and the tactile bump. The EG Orange are like Cherry MX Brown. They have no click, but they do have a tactile bump. And the EG Grey are like Cherry MX Red, which have no click or bump. Here's a typing test on the EG Purples. And here's a sound test on each. The down arrow is the gray, up arrow is orange, and left arrow is purple, meaning smooth, bump, and then clicky bump. So they don't give you too many extra switches, but according to the site, you can buy entire packs. As for build quality, keeping the price in mind, the switches are good, and the keycaps aren't too bad either. Nothing special, but should be worth the money. There are no USB ports or anything else on the board, but you're meant to be able to get add-ons, including a 24 key extra pad. They're coming out later than this review, so be sure to check their website for details. And the cable is braided and 1.8 meters. It comes with software, which allows some key management. I don't like changing default keys though, so this will be better with the add-on keys. But if you do want to change, you have multimedia functions, single key, launch program, and call macro. You can set the LED to auto off or disable. You can also change the polling rate and also set the profiles. Record macros in here, but only works with the keyboard, not mouse. Then lastly, just some update information. Now here are some highlights from using this keyboard while I give my conclusion. So it's relatively cheap, especially for a mechanical board. Being able to change the switches is a nice touch. And while I'm not a big fan of changing the color bars manually, if this is in your price range, 
then it's better than being stuck with one colour. One thing I'd like to add is that instead of the carry case, I would have liked more switches. Unless you're going to lands a lot, there's really no reason to have a carry case for the keyboard. And given that we can change the switches on this board, it seems like that would have been the better investment. Still, if you want a keyboard that's customizable in that way, and you want some extra add-ons, then this is definitely worth a look. Special thanks to Epic Gift for sending this out for a review. If you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave the usual links in the description. Subscribe for more reviews and gaming videos, like this one, and I'll catch you in the next.